Welcome to my channel. If we haven't met before, I'm Kari Greger, the artist engraver. Ma'am? I'm so glad you could join me. In this video, I am hand engraving a set of Colt pistols, 357 Magnum, Evil Roy. Let's get into it. I thought it was a good idea to show you the pieces before they had very much engraving on them. I had started a little bit on the cylinders, as you can see. Every gun makes its own tune. This is my ball vise. It swivels and pivots, and I can move it around as much as I want. These are grips that have rubber sided so that I can put things in there and not damage the steel with the vise. They're magnetic. So let's put the cylinder in that is not done, and I'm very carefully writing down. I want to be able to match exactly. Once I come up with a design, I have to do it 12 times, you know, so it has to be very, very precise and make it as exact as possible. I take very careful measurements and then use those measurements and the sample of the design. First thing we're going to do is put some Chinese white. It is a watercolor paint on the gun, and then I start drawing, finding the middle and then putting all of those marks that I had measured ahead of time and put into my notes, and then comparing my notes with the measurements and comparing with the other cylinder, then I start doing the sketch. So everything is hand done. Have my nice circle template and the size noted as it was before. And then everywhere that the line is supposed to cross the middle line, I've got a measurement for that. That helps me get everything as similar as possible because this is supposed to be matching all the flutes. The key element of design in scroll is this shell or this... Um, the swirl of the scroll and you have to get that very precise and then you can build on it all you want. So I sped up the drawing so that it didn't take so long, about four or five times <laughs> the speed. You don't have to sit here and watch me draw, but I think it's kind of interesting for you to see how, um, how a scroll is put together. And there you have the completed sketch. I take a picture of this and send it to the client. This is my graver. It's a Lindsay engraver. And it's operated by a foot pedal. It, it runs by compressed air. That's the little tube you see going to the tool. I'm going to take the graver out, the bit, and take off the finger protector. And then I have to sharpen it. I have to sharpen it, oh, probably every few minutes, every 10 minutes or so, depending on the product that I'm engraving on the steel or the bronze or brass or whatever metal I'm engraving. I have a little jig there to keep the measurement accurate, and this is my sharpening jig. Lindsay makes these, and it... it helps you with the sharpening of it, the face of the of the bit, and then the foot part, which is what I'm doing right now, the angle of the foot. It's a V-cut, makes a V-cut, and you have to make sure that you have no chips, everything is smooth, and it doesn't take too much to sharpen it. I shape these myself. It takes a little bit more time, of course, to shape them, but I am sharpening all the time, and that is to make sure that we have a good, smooth, nice bite of the cut into the metal. And I use my visor there with the extra monocle to, to see how the sharpening is going. There it is, all put together again, and we're ready to roll. So let's get to cutting this cylinder. So I'm using my visor 
and you can see the nice curl of the metal coming off of there. I'm watching at it through the visor. If you see bright lights on it, it's because of the lights from the visor. There we go. Nice curl. This is this is good. One problem I have with my camera is that my, my head or my hair keeps falling into the focus. It's it's hard to keep the focus on what I'm working on. The cylinders is a little bit easier because it doesn't turn in such a big radius. But um, most of the time I have a problem with the camera it's keeping focused. You can see this is this is the speed that it goes. I have sped up a lot of the engraving for this video because it just is a long time. But look at that nice curl. Oh, it's very satisfying to see that nice metal curl coming off. And you know you've got a really good cut. I like to start with the backbone of the scroll and do that first and then come in and do the little details inside. So here we go, we're going to start with the inside. All the leaves and the little buds on coming from the inside. You can see that every turn, every little bud or turn is, is accomplished by holding the graver with my right hand and moving the vise with my left hand. This is a two-handed job. Everything has to be turned. It's like, well, my husband always explains it. It's like drawing on a piece of paper and moving the paper with your left hand into the pencil. So it's very much a two-handed, you need a lot of coordination. Here I've sped this up so you can see. It doesn't go this fast, but it's kind of fun to see how that comes together. So every turn is a rotation of the vise. Now I just take a little drop of water and rub it on with a rub it around with a cloth to take off the sketch and the watercolor paint. And there we have the cut flute. Have to compare it again to see how things are consistent with the other cylinder. This is my dot punch. It's an engraver, and here's my hammer. I use this dot punch to produce the dotted background. It's, it's a way of adding texture for relief without cutting away a lot of metal. Cutting metal means time, and that also means money. So this is a way I can produce a textured relief or background to the scroll without adding a lot of cost. This is the old-fashioned engraving. Hammer and chisel, or dot punch. And we have both cylinders finished. This is a still of snapshot of a sketch that I did for the left-hand side of the gun, of the frame. This is not the left-hand side, but I'm going to show you the process that I used to put it into my vise. I have a little jig here. Well, little. It's, it's big. It's this piece of plywood here that my husband has shaped for me and uh, built so that it fits into my vise. Then I use a glue gun. I bet you never knew that a glue gun was so useful. You can glue this into place and it is so much easier and so much more secure than any other kind of clamp or vice thing that to put the gun into, to sit it into the, um, into the vice. I slathered on a whole lot of hot glue and then just press the metal part into the hot glue and see where I need some extra gaps filled. I can just take this glue gun and squirt it in where I need a little extra support. It's liquid and it helps that I've got so much built up on the glue, on, on the um, wood, 
so that I can just fill in where I need a little bit. It doesn't take as much glue as it did the first one that I put into this vise. So we take it to the engraver and we start cutting. I'm starting out right on the corner here. I have to adjust and to make sure that I can engrave around a full circle. See, I this wood, this little jig that I've got, um, I can grab the edge of the plywood and move the ball vise. And so it's the same principle as when I was working on the cylinders. I'm moving the, the piece of work into the graver and with the other hand, with my right hand, I am adjusting for the, the bevel. So it's a V cut and it it d just depends how I twist my wrist as to where it's going to cut the bevel. If you want the bevel to the outside of the design all the time. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, more than meets the eye. I'm not just simply cutting. I'm also using my foot to gauge the speed and to uh, the speed of the hammer that's inside of the graver. Um, that's done through air and so I'm, I'm pressing down with my foot. You can hear whenever it revs up and starts going. That's me pushing on the gas to get the, uh, the, to get the hammer going in the graver. So I have to adjust the speed of the hammer with my foot. I'm moving the work into the graver with the left hand and with the right hand uh, cutting and rotating my wrist so that it handles the, uh, the bevel of the cut. And I'm always comparing it to the other piece to see if I can get it matched up. I, I, I didn't want to film the actual designing of this. I develop it as I go. Oh, now this little cut, this is a little uh, spud, little little bud that, uh, of uh, the scroll, but it looks little, but I have to make big adjustments for this because you see my graver is going to hit that ball. The, the problem with the, doing this area of the gun is you always have to be aware of where the ball of the frame is because I can't go over it. It's going to adjust. The, the cut would look really stupid if I had to adjust over the ball. Look at that. Isn't that nice? We had a nice curl. Oh, that's just so thrilling to see a nice curl come off of the piece. There, this one's done. Polish it up, take off the white paint, and now I'm ready to do the background. Not as much control or as much bother goes into this. It still takes a lot of skill and attention though because you have to make sure that you don't get rebound. Every time you hit, that punch wants to jump. So you have to be able to control that. There we go. And check for any burrs once again. Make sure that there is no raised portions left by the graver. Uh, I'm going to show you my little jig here that my husband built for me. He rounded the corners all off nicely. Um, and he put this piece of wood, screwed it into the uh, back of it. This way you can also see the ball vise. You see how it rotates on that uh, rubber tire thing. And it swivels, it rotates, I can move it wherever I want to. There we go. You can see that nice piece of wood in the back so that it holds it in. I could not clamp this this nice revolver in any other way it, it as as conveniently you know you want to be able to have the part that you're working on as close to the center as possible so that means you know moving things always to be close to the center now I'm going to be working on the back part of the frame there's a little sort of um, sunburst section there you may have remember it from the beginning of the design. 
I don't know. I don't have it drawn on this one. Yeah, I must have shown you the sketch from the first one. Next thing I'm going to be doing is working on the ball part of the frame and the front strap, right? There's the little flourish. I wanted something that would be a nice little taste, a little spritz of something, but not too overwhelming because we don't want to overpower the natural beauty of the piece. Next, I'm going to be working on the ball part of the frame back behind the cylinders. You can see it's a nice little scroll. There's always different designs that are traditionally put on the, on the ball, but this one's a little bit out of the ordinary. You don't usually have scroll on the ball. There's a nice sketch of it. You can see. Cutting the ball part of the frame is quite difficult because there's so many different factors moving and you've got a lot of things going. I'm, I'm using the pedal on the floor to supply air to the graver. It moves the little hammer inside the graver and so I don't have to use my hammer physically outside like you saw me with the dot punch. There's a little hammer inside there that is powered by the compressed air and I'm operating that with my foot. So that is where you hear it speeds up by giving it more air and the hammer goes faster. So I'm dealing with that. I'm also dealing with the, the bevel with my wrist and of course the metal is rounded so that is increased difficulty to keep that steady. And then moving the whole contraption with my left hand so that it moves the cut into the piece. It's just, there's a lot going on. We are finished on this side. This left side is finished. So it goes into the deep freeze. When it freezes, the glue will contract and we can pop that off. While that's in the freezer, I am going to do the top strap. I did the design on the other piece, so I'm just going to be duplicating that. I don't have to spend time designing. I didn't take any video when I was actually designing the pieces because that just takes a long time for me to figure out and draw things in. And it, it makes for a lot of footage. I still got a lot of footage here for this video that I'm not going to be able to use. So might as well do the stuff where it moves, the action moves quickly. I did the one side of the strap. This, I, this top strap needs two sides and they need to be identical. So I'm going to be drawing this design and engraving it four times. Um, this two on each one and they have to mirror each other. So it always has to be pretty precise. And once again, I've got notes on how I did this and the measurement and everything so that everything stays consistent. And then there's always the visual comparison. I have the sketch to what I've already cut, and then I'll be comparing it to the other piece. Well, let's cut this baby. I sped this up. This cutting, but you can, it's very satisfying for, as an engraver to see that curl come off. Oh, that's so nice. Then I'm going around and doing the little sprouts, little buds, and that takes a little bit of control because once again, it's a slightly rounded surface and you have to remain consistent. There we go. Two sides mirroring each other and matching. Top strap done. If you are interested in having some engraving done, please drop me a note via email. You can find the email address in the About tab on my YouTube channel. You also will find other social media connections in the description box below the video. Please follow, subscribe, hit that like button, and comment. It's frozen, frozen hard. 
Look at that. Look at that. You can see the frost on the piece. <laughs> but watch how easy it is to take this out once that glue has contracted. Look at that. You just have to little pressure and it pulls it right off. And I've got all that glue there and look at the frost. This is really cold hard steel. <laughs> Left side is complete. Next, I'm going to do the barrel. Now, traditionally for the amount of engraving that this fellow wanted done, I would have done one string of scroll down the top, but this has got a stamp, an imprint, and wording on the very top, which makes it... Well, you can't cut through that because it's going to look really stupid to have the engraving or have the wording all cut through. So we have to design something to the, that goes around it. So I'm doing scroll on both sides, which means it's actually double the work, but it looks really nice. And I made it so it's flush to the top. So uh, you can see it, uh, the scroll decreases in size as it goes to the towards the point of the down the barrel and it's decreases all to to the one side so that it'll make a nice mirroring effect when when we're finished um, very nice to match now once again we are dealing with a curved surface and this one I've got it clamped in here but it's not as secure as when I glue it in and I couldn't glue this into that uh, jig that I have. This has to be grabbed. I, I might have to find a better way of doing this on the side like that, but look, we're done. And then go in with the dotted background, which is hard to show when I have to have my fingers in the way. <laughs> but here you get to see the finished piece. There we are, the one side and you can see how they are mirrored around that lettering from Cimarron. And then this is the left side. Backstrap is next. This is the top of the backstrap. I didn't film engraving it, but that's the design I came up with. Now well, I'm going to be doing the scroll going down the backstrap. We've got three, three swirls. And I spread up the drawing time. It's actually easier to show the drawing of this than the engraving because when I engrave, I'm moving the piece constantly and it goes out of focus. It, flo it floats out of frame as I swir swirl it around, you know, with my left hand. There we go, let's match that. Make sure that drawing is exactly the same and then we will cut it. This is a lot steadier in the vise. This particular gripping method is much more secure. Do the dotted relief. 120 for this colt. You want to try it out? Both back straps are done. Moving on to the right side. And I'm not going to take as much time up on this. It's very similar to the drawing that I had done on the left side. There's some slight variations, but it's basically very similar, very similar. And once again, as I am cutting, I have to be really aware of where the ball is, the steel. And I had a problem with this. My hair, my head keeps, I'm doing my own photography. So my head, my hands move in the way of the camera. You can't see the work as well. Um, 
it's it's the best I can do. I try and set it up, but then when things start moving and I'm I'm really cutting and I'm moving the piece and I'm not going to sacrifice working on this piece for the sake of the film. Now we're into doing the dotted background, adding that nice relief, and carving on the gate, the ball on the other side. This is called the gate. I, I ended up, you can see the ball or the gate is moving as I'm trying to cut it, and I've got all this other stuff going on. I, I needed to find a way. I ended up putting some uh, glue on it to hold it in place because... It was, the gate itself was moving, so I've got too much other things going on. I had to do something to secure it. Now we're going to do that little flourish at the front strap. So that's on each side and on both guns. And something that I have to do four times. Everything match. Oh, here I'm taking one of those little burrs off. Watch that. Just, yeah, just to make it smooth. That's all it takes. You have to just kind of zip zip and take the burrs off and make sure that there's no rough or raised part of the metal. There we go. This is going in the freezer. The Lord provides me with everything I need. Out of the freezer, all finished. Both of them. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below and leave a comment. Please also find in the description box below links to the website, theartistengraver.com, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Next video, I'm going to be engraving either a Ruger Red Label shotgun or a Winchester 1886. I haven't decided which one to edit first, so while you're leaving a comment, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button and that bell for notification so you will know when that metal cutting video is posted. Thank you for watching. Why, well, you're gonna pull those pistols and whistle Dixie.